Hello, I'm Petrifying Pumpkins and I am worried about the PS Viewer 2. I'm making this video one day before the PS Viewer 2's one year anniversary. And in my opinion, it has been a fantastic year for PS Viewer 2 titles. Absolutely shits on PS Viewer 1's first year. You've got your Resident Evil Ace, you've got your No Man's Sky, you've got Gran Turismo 7, Horizon, all these big AAA slappers on day one really blew it out of the park. You had your Pavlov later on, Cam Firewall, you had Breachers, you had, goddamn, the most recent one I can think of, Resident Evil 4 Remake, a big one. And a bunch of other titles as well that I just can't think of off the top of my head. But my point is that year one of PS4 2 has been pretty phenomenal, I would say. And if year two and year three can keep that going, well, then I'd be pretty happy with my 600 euro investment in the PS Viewer 2 headset. Problem for me right now is that I'm not sure that year two and year three will match what year one has done. In fact, right now, I cannot think off the top of my head, at least, of a single triple A title, you know, something on the level of Resident Evil, something on the level of Gran Turismo 7 that is announced that is upcoming, maybe Metro Awakening VR, but even that, I haven't seen enough of it yet to convince me that this is, you know, up there on those kind of upper echelons with, you know, Resident Evil 4 Remake or something like that. Now, that's not to say there is no games that I'm looking forward to. I cannot wait for Phasmophobia. I cannot wait for Aces of Thunder and even Metro Awakening as well. It's something I'm excited about. So there are games coming up that I am really excited about. It just feels that all of a sudden we've gotten to a point with the PS4 2 where we are relying on the indies to carry the PS4 2 headset. And I don't think there's any platform out there that has been very successful when it has had to rely solely on indie developers to carry the mantle going forward. On top of that, over recent months, there just has been more and more red flags popping up in the world of PS4 2 that has got me, you know, more and more concerned as the months have gone on. So first things first, I mean, we can look at the sales of the PS4 2. I believe after six weeks, we got the update that it had sold 600,000 units, which was actually, you know, that was actually pretty good. That was outpacing PS4 1. But since then, we've got nothing official from Sony. Now, if you look at the PS5, Sony do like to keep us updated, you know, every quarter or so. Every few months, it seems we get an update, you know, that Sony has hit 13 million. Now they've hit 50 million. There's nothing like that for PS4 2. Maybe it's a case of, you know, you, they don't want to announce it because it doesn't look good. Then you had that big Insomniac leak where a hacker got into the system and, you know, revealed all their upcoming plans for the next 10 years for Insomniac. And, you know, not a single one of those titles had anything to do with PS4 2, which was particularly disappointing for me as a PS4 fan because when Sony acquired Insomniac, it was particularly exciting because Insomniac have a history of making high quality games for the Oculus Rift and Judging by these leaks, judging by the roadmap that they have internally, we won't get to see the fruits of that talent on PS4 2. Then there was the first contact entertainment, scenario, incident, fiasco, whatever you want to call it, where Firewall Ultra came out, a sequel to one of the best games on PS4 1, one of the most successful games on PS4 1, I would say. And that game had a difficult launch, and after four months, the studio had to close down, and I would say in large part that is due to Sony choosing not to support them. Keeping in mind, Firewall is a first-party Sony title. That was just four months after the game, and keep in mind also that the game had significantly improved with, you know, patches over time. I feel like it was heading towards a really good direction, and then that just got cut short four months. I mean, that's ridiculously short. Not too long after that, we had the Rec Room developers telling us that it was not financially or economically viable for them to port Rec Room over to PS4 2, another red flag for me. Then you had the Amazon sales chart, the pie graph thing, where they showed that the Quest 2 and Quest 3 combined were outselling PS4 2 at a race of about 30 to 1, which was just horrific to look at. You also then had the comments from the Ubisoft co-founder Yves Guimon or whatever you say. I don't know, it's a French name, I can't pronounce it. But basically, he wasn't very satisfied with the way Assassin's Creed Nexus, which is a big kind of AAA level game for the Quest, how it performed in terms of sales. And you might say to yourself, well, Assassin's Creed Nexus has got nothing to do with PS4 2. But what I would say is that if the Quest and all the sales they're getting, apparently there's 20 million of them out there, plus... If they can't satisfy these AAA developers that we want to be making games on our platform, then how was the PS4 2 going to be able to do that? Now, 
There is counter arguments for probably each and every one of the red flags I have raised. And by the way, I welcome the counter arguments in the comments below if you have them. Those counter arguments may make it seem not as bad as the red flags initially seem. So for example, one of the ones I've seen is that, you know, the Rec Room developers, they may have started life as a VR studio, but Rec Room has kind of expanded past that. Like they're big on flat traditional consoles. They're big on mobile now. And maybe virtual reality just isn't a big priority for them anymore because that's not where the money is. And that's, you know, fair enough. You could also say that just because Sony hasn't told us what the sales are for the PS4 2, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad. They could be just waiting for a milestone like tomorrow for the one year anniversary and they might reveal something that's, you know, more than I expected, which would be nice. And, you know, stuff like just because Insomniac don't have a PS4 2 game on the roadmap right now doesn't mean things can't change, doesn't mean somebody can't come in and make the request, hey, make this with VR support or whatever. That's all subject to change. So, yeah, that's fair enough also. It also doesn't rule out the possibility that, you know, Naughty Dog or Sony Santa Monica or any of the other Sony first party studios could be working on something behind the scenes that we don't know about. And while I do think that some of these, you know, counter arguments are plausible, maybe possible or probable in some cases, I still have doubts remaining and those doubts will continue to hang over my head like a dark cloud until Sony comes along and dispels them, hopefully tomorrow at this, you know, one year anniversary, I'm expecting maybe a blog post or some kind or, you know, something to acknowledge the one year anniversary. And I hope they mark it with something special. I hope they can show us, you know, maybe a new game, you know, Astro Boss, Twisted Metal. These kind of things have been rumored for a long time. Maybe they'll give us the sales figures and say, hey, look, it's actually sold three million units. And that would surprise me. That would be much healthier than I would have expected. I highly doubt it's that high. Uh, from what I've seen from a lot of even developers talking about it, it's more closer to 1 million, I think. So I'll be shocked if it's anything more than that. But for me, the best thing that they could do is to cut the price of the PS4 2. It is expensive. Ever since they revealed the price of the PS4 2, I was just worried from the get-go that this was going to be, you know, it's going to find a hard time gaining traction in the mainstream at a price, you know, it was more expensive than the PS5 in some places at least and that seems to be the first thing that you know the average gamer who's not a VR enthusiast the kind of people that we need to be getting into VR if we want to see VR go mainstream uh, they're the ones saying this thing is more expensive than the console itself I'm not buying this I don't care how, how many good games it has it's just a ridiculous price it's a peripheral why is the peripheral costing more than the console itself and uh, these are things that Sony need to address and the one way to do that is to cut the price you know bring it down to 400 cut take 100 take 150 off if possible it might not be possible it might not be economically feasible for them to do that but i still feel like it needs to happen and then i think they need to try and focus on recouping those costs or those losses by focusing on selling software down the line making it back that way that seems that's the way it's kind of done when it comes to console hardware i mean you have to keep in mind as well as dead eye dan told me in the discord like it was a good point he brought up is you know the way the world is right now in terms of the economy the inflation uh the cost of living crisis that's happening in a lot of countries it's just so difficult for somebody to look at a ps4 or two in my country cost 600 euro maybe it's 550 in america or whatever it is and that's like a big amount of money uh, to be tossing away on, you know, like a, a luxury item. Whereas maybe seven years ago when the PS4 1 came out, it was probably easier to do that. You know, the world seemed a bit, it was in a better place back then, I think. The other key point that I think Sony needs to focus on after pricing has to be hybrid games. I think they really need to lean into this hybrid game model. Gran Turismo 7, Resident Evil, those games have shown us, you know, that despite something like Assassin's Creed, Nexus, maybe that's not feasible. Maybe it's not feasible to do a VR only game at a AAA level to see a healthy return on investment. But when you do the hybrid approach, even if the VR aspect of it flops to some degree, you still have the flat aspect of it, the traditional aspect. So Gran Turismo 7, you know, maybe only 5% of people bought that game with PSVR 2 in mind, but it doesn't matter because they still had all the sales from the people who bought it with flat in mind. Same with Resident Evil. Spread the risk by going hybrid, you know. I think that's where we are right now with VR, the stage that we're in in the game. Like, it's not strong enough to swim by itself yet. It needs the kind of, the training wheels that uh, the hybrid games provide. And 
this is how we get AAA in VR, and it works. Hybrid just makes so much sense. And even, like, I thought we were on the same page with Sony because Jim Ryan did an interview with Wired, maybe, I can't remember who it was, but uh, he, d he did discuss this. He said that hybrid seemed to be the way to go. So going into this generation, I was like, cool, we can expect a lot more hybrid games, games like Hitman, games like uh, Resident Evil 7, and of course Capcom came good with Resident Evil 8 and 4, but I was expecting more, and I was expecting it to be, you know, faster. Right now, we kind of don't have anything to look forward to in terms of like a big AAA hybrid. We don't know of any of them yet. That's not to say they're not in the pipeline, obviously. But uh, when it comes to first party as well, it's been kind of disappointing. You know, you look at The Last of Us Part 1 remake. That was a perfect opportunity for them to add virtual reality into it. And they never did. You know, games like God of War, Uncharted Collection or whatever. Like all of these games, especially that they're first party. Sony have to be doing more to get virtual reality support into them. Give people a reason to buy the fucking thing. So I'm really hoping tomorrow that Sony can touch on some of these concerns that I'm having, some of these doubts, and show us some signs that they're heading in the right direction with PSVR 2. I mean, the nightmare scenario that I believe is possible, very possible, is that they just put out a blog post or a tweet saying, Happy birthday, PSVR 2. See you later. That's it. Nothing else. And then this big narrative is created by the IGNs, the big media sites out there with massive reach, and you'll start seeing the articles you know, one year later, my headset's still gathering dust and blah, 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 the usual. And uh, it just, like, this negativity will snowball and get worse and it actually will affect, you know, the future of the platform in a negative way. So please, Sony, throw us a bone tomorrow at this one-year anniversary or sometime in the very near future so that we can get a solid roadmap and something to look forward to, like a, a solid list of titles to look forward to and some hope with a price cut and you know, focus on hybrid and all these other things I've mentioned. I mean, there's a lot, I think, that needs to be done to get PS4 2 into what people would consider a successful place. But you might disagree with me. Maybe I'm uh, being a doom merchant or, you know, whatever. There's people out there who don't like to see the criticism. I'm a massive fan of PS4 2. My channel is dedicated to PS4 2. The, the channel depends on PS4 2 to do well or else, you know, the channel's done. So it doesn't benefit me, it does not behoove me for PSVR 2 to not do well. I want it to do well, but I can't ignore what's in front of us. Year 1 has been fantastic, I've said this already, but I need Year 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 to all be fantastic as well. Anyway, that's it for this video, lads and ladies. If you've enjoyed us and want more PSVR 2 content in your life, then hit subscribe. Before I go, let me thank my subscribers on... Sorry, my YouTube members, I should say, whose names are on the screen as I speak. They are the following. Vincent McGlone, Mr. Tortoise, Eziki, Roy Martini, Unstable Fox, Maiki Moy, Owen Evans, DJ Son 57, Jason Ewan, TB, Apuk DCFC, Scooby Man, The Gamecast, Brian Tam, Higher Primate 30, Piotrick F., Nart Boglin, JL, Freps Nominal, Shape Shifter, The Amorphous, Game Cat, Cheeb Eam, Amanda Clark, Germ Warfare, Horatio Ward, Funky Sloth, Love Machine 83, Infinity Lefty, 86 The Mad Hatter, Prophecy 777, Durban Brown, Jeremiah, Roy Schwartz, Geza, Captain F. Castle, I'm not going to say that one out loud, Chairface, Papa Shuffler, Jeremy Winnow Hedrenik. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not trying to I'm I don't know what that is. J Gamer UK, Empathy the Gamecast, Airy, T G K two, Jason Voorhees, Dante Bruce, Mr. Seven Seven Seven, Aced, Lone Wolf Vior, Edify Tell I Die, Superfly AF, Crumb, Pete Hawkins Gaming Reptiles and Nonsense, No One Knows. Dej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Move Master Mick, Esports Commentator for Hire, Muzz, Dead Eye Dan, and Chopped PPE. Thank you for the support. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please stay nice and moist.